Well, hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Rachel Cruz Show. And this episode is pretty special because I have my brother and sister here. Guys, welcome. Thanks, Rachel. Thank you. How does it feel in here? You love it? It's good. <laughs> Cozy. Yeah, good. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we have Denise and Daniel. Okay, so say you don't have to do age, but like— okay. Married, not married, kids, not. So people can kind of get a grasp of like, okay, yeah. Because you're older. You're the yes, oldest. I'm the oldest. And so, yeah, we're two and a half years difference. And I'm married with three little babies. Three babes. So, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm the youngest. Yeah, you're four years older than me. Yes. And Denise is six years older than me. So I was born a little bit after some of the drama, but uh, <laughs> learned all the hard lessons. So That's right. That's right. And married. <laughs> yeah, married. My wife, Allison. And a babe coming. And a baby on the way. Yeah. Yeah. So fun. Later this summer. So everyone on the show or most people that watch know kind of the Ramsey story and the bankruptcy and that I was born the year that that happened. So you were like two and a half ish. Mm-hmm. I was born that year. Daniel came a little bit after. So when I was writing the book, Know Yourself, Know Your Money, and I was mm-hmm. doing the manuscript of the childhood classrooms, realizing that money's communicated in two ways. It's communicated verbally and emotionally, mm-hmm. and it creates kind of these four classrooms. So... I said in the book that I felt like we grew up in classroom number four, Mm -hmm. which is the stable money classroom or the secure money classroom. And that is where it's verbally open and emotionally calm. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to just throw it out here because I said in the book too, like siblings can have a different perspective. So do Mm -hmm. you all think we grew up in that classroom or a different one? I would think we grew up in that one. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, especially because mom and dad were so open. At, I mean, especially at that point, because it was still so new mm-hmm. that they were, like, in the teaching mode. And so mm-hmm. they all they wanted to do was, like, teach us because they were excited and, like, they didn't want us to screw up like they did. Yes. And so, yeah, it was calm, but, like, exciting calm, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah, totally. So they made it fun. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Do you think we grew up in that classroom? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was never stressed— it was open, but mm-hmm. we talked about, hey, we're not going to do something because it's not part of the plan. It was more of a, a reason of discipline than actually, like, um, us not, you know, being able to or us being stressed about it. So, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah. So one of those, again, part of that quadrant is the the verbal communication. We mm-hmm. just said that. So it's either for people closed or open. And we mm-hmm. would say we are an open verbal oh, family. Yeah. Would you agree? <laughs> yes, <Absolutely>. we are. <laughs> <laughs> Including some debates, <laughs> some Oh, we love family debates. Yeah, yeah we, can get, we can get into it. We can get into it. But when it comes to money, like you guys said, we talked about it. So what are a couple of ways, or do you have any memories of talking about money, whether it's something you wanted to mm-hmm. buy or anything like that? Yeah. I mean, when you first said that, I, all I thought about was Sundays. Like Sunday was payday for yes. us. And so we'd get yeah. our little chore charts yeah. and go down and— like figure out, okay, I did this chore, I didn't do this chore, and we got paid. And so, I mean, I'm sitting in the living room floor and like dividing out like giving, spending, saving. Mm -hmm. And so even at a young age, we were doing that. And so just having those um, real conversations with mom and dad about Mm -hmm. spending like, okay, this is, I was saving up for a Barbie doll or whatever. And so being able to um, be able to go to the store and be able to purchase that or um, yeah, or saving for my car. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, so yeah, we had those like real conversations. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was good open dialogue where we actually understood. Uh, I feel like they really taught us the value of it, of like earning mm-hmm. it and that it's not limitless. Like their pocketbook, uh, their ability to give us money or uh, us to earn, like it has to be earned. It can't just be found. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. So— one thing that I feel like parents struggle with, you probably feel like this with your kids. I'm like, mm-hmm. how do we, how to raise kids that are not entitled, mm-hmm. that are not spoiled, mm-hmm. that understand the value of a dollar, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. like doing commissions and all of that, I think is a great foundation to start mm-hmm. with your kids. But as we grew older, my mom and dad became more and more successful. I mean, when you do what we teach over a long period mm-hmm. of time, you're gonna build wealth. Mm-hmm. When you're out of debt, you're investing, you're saving, you're giving. Mm-hmm mathematically, that's pretty much what occurs mm-hmm. if that's what you do consistently. So so when we were, you know, probably in high school, I feel like I was still told no. Even though mom and dad had the ability mm-hmm. to give us things, mm-hmm. and whether that's a nice purse or buying something cheap at Target, like, right? Like, mm-hmm. it wasn't the price that made the difference. Mm-hmm. Like, I always look back, like, man, they did that really well because yeah. I feel like we somewhat— <laughs> we're not perfect by any <laughs> means. But I feel like they did a great job— yeah balancing blessings in mm-hmm. life, but yet mm-hmm. putting that responsibility on us. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And how do you, how, do you have any thoughts around that? Because people ask a lot. 
how not to raise entitled, spoiled kids. How do you think mm-hmm. mom and dad did that? Yeah. Considering y'all are not spoiled and entitled, which <laughs> they might be just a little bit. I'm the, I'm the good one. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, one thing that stands out to me is I remember— um, you know, we live very we live very modestly, mm-hmm. um, even when they could afford stuff. And I don't think I realized how successful, you know, mm-hmm. our parents were and how good they were financially until I got older and saw them loosen the reins on themselves and saw them starting to buy different cars and they moved houses and things like that. Mm-hmm. Like, I had no idea. And then asking them the questions afterwards made me realize they were way more intentional and they weren't they were living way below their means for a lot longer time than I realized. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so yeah. Which is the thing, more is caught than taught, right? Yeah. Exactly. Like when you watch your parents have a boundary mm-hmm. with money, whether mm-hmm. they can or can't, it's is it necessary? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That automatically gives influence mm-hmm. on your kids. Your yeah. kids yeah. are watching you. Yeah. It's huge, so huge. Today we're talking about things we need to stop wasting $20 on. Baby shoes. Mm -hmm. They're babies. They're not walking around. Don't buy shoes for them. Lottery tickets. Yeah, the Powerball jackpot. You got one in 292 million chances of winning, so don't waste your money. An Olaf waffle maker. I mean, pretty dang cute. I know. And the results? Adorable, but let it go. Wipe warmers. Yeah, the baby's going to survive. Keep your $20. Clothes for your pets. I mean, super cute, fabulous, bougie all the things, but you don't need to spend $20 on it. Guys, these things are totally unnecessary. What I do need to make sure I'm taken care of are these guys. I remember when Winston and I first got married and we talked about life insurance. Honestly, it was easy for us to talk about because we wanted to keep each other covered in case the worst were to ever happen. That's why we have term life insurance through Xander Insurance. It's $20 to $30 a month that I am more than happy to spend. Xander shops the top-rated term life insurance companies to make sure that they find you the best rates for the coverage that your family needs. You can have the same peace of mind that we have. So go to xander.com to get started today. Don't waste any more time. Okay, what's a time, speaking of boundaries, that mom and dad said no to you, that you were like, man, I really want that. And they were like, "Mm, nope. Like a, like a like a teen like teenager, not like like. Is there any time that I was like, man? Yeah, I I do have a memory of going to Best Buy when I was a kid, and I had saved up all this money to buy a Game Boy, and I remember I didn't calculate the tax. Like I I I knew how much it cost, and I showed up with with the right amount of money, and I didn't have the money for the tax because I just you know who knew that was a good lesson in its, mm-hmm. of itself, um, and I remember going and purchasing it, but I couldn't afford a game because I had to pay the tax. So I bought this Game Boy without a game. Uh, I think I think I remember, I don't, I'm not sure exactly, but I think I remember my mom bailing me out and then me paying her back, like, you know, when we got home or something like that. So, like, it's not like they were hardcore on yes, every little yes, thing. Like, right. she felt bad for me, and she rec- recognized it, <laughs> but it still stuck with me. I still learned the lesson, even though she, you know, she helped me out a little bit. Yes, yes, so, that's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. The Game Boy. The Game Boy. Yeah. Tetris. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Do you have any stories, Denise? God, I know. It's something similar. I mean, just like being a girl, I mean, you like— the fun shoes and the fun purses. And so yeah. just, I mean, at Christmas time and stuff, you know, yeah, wanting to ask for something. And they're like, no, like <laughs> you are a teenager. You don't need to be buying <laughs> or like asking for these yes, types of things. Totally, so, totally. Yeah. That's so good. Okay, so yeah. what is one thing that you will duplicate, replicate, mm. if you will, that mom and dad did that you loved? And then is there anything, if not, no big deal, is there anything mm-hmm. you would do different? I don't know that's something we've already kind of started with our kids, and um, we have like the little junior uh, chore charts, yes. and so they're hanging up on the fridge. They love being able. Okay, I made up my bed. I gotta run downstairs mm-hmm. and put my check mark. So just starting it. that process early, and yeah. then mm-hmm. um, also just teaching them to give at mm-hmm. an early age because I think that's so important and such a firm foundation to start mm-hmm. on that. Um, I mean, I remember looking back, and that was something that we started so early, and yeah. that's something that's been mm-hmm. implanted in us um, mm-hmm. that it hasn't even been a question now as adults. Like, the first thing you do, tithe to the church. Mm-hmm. And so um, mm-hmm. it doesn't—it's not that big of a deal, you know, Yeah, which is such sense. a good point because so. when you change your money habits to say, okay, I'm going to do something new like giving, like yeah. maybe as an adult you never, you never 
did give and you're like, hey, mm-hmm. no, I want to start that. It's kind of this new muscle you have to build. Mm-hmm. But when it's all you know, you don't have to learn anything new. No, it's just part exactly. of it. Yeah. It's just part mm-hmm. of yeah, life. That's great. So, the yeah. giving, I love mm-hmm. that. Yeah, the giving is something that came in front of mind for me. It was like, I remember at church, you know, watching our dad uh, put the check in the tithe, mm-hmm. you know. And I remember one day he stopped doing it and being like, I was like, what the heck? And he's like, oh, I started doing it online or, or I, started, <laughs> yeah. I started mailing it. or He said something yeah, like yeah. that. And I remember being like, oh, okay. You know, but um, but they involved us in their giving. They mm-hmm. talked about it, and they gave us opportunities. I remember mm-hmm. around Christmas time, us going to the grocery store at Kroger and, uh, you know, watching people go in and, and handing them money as they went in, mm-hmm. people that, that looked like they uh, they could use it, and then we prayed over mm-hmm. that process. And yep. that was really life-changing. Mm-hmm. And I think you would do different. People always ask me this question a lot, and I always say, like, the principles of what we learned, no. I mean, I'm I still going to— yeah. Not that they did it perfectly, no, but like right. they did. What's your Daniel? You know yes, what? Is what? Like, oh, I mean, I just thought of, about your book uh, where you talked about mom stealing popcorn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was one thing that I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, not justifying being cheap in <laughs> yeah. really crazy ways, but yeah, okay. That is good. That is good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just, just being able to seriously. actually spend your money. Or being at Cracker yeah. Barrel and taking all the jelly and putting it in your purse. You're like or maple syrup. Or maple syrup. <laughs> oh yeah. All of it. <laughs> all of it. <laughs> That's so funny. I know. I, I don't I guess I think I would do the car thing. I love the matching yeah. at sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even college, I feel like they were a little bit mm-hmm. which is it's funny to say, it's kind of the opposite extreme of what you would think. They mm-hmm. did not make us work in college. Mm-hmm. Uh sometimes summers, they're like you have to be productive yeah. and do something. But there's a level of skin in the game I think I may mm-hmm. want my kids to do with college. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that looks like, what capacity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I I'm leaning that way right now for some yeah. reason. Yeah. That's something I thought about. Yeah. yeah. But. I know they gave, uh, yeah, during college, uh, they helped us out. So we went and had to get a job. But I remember I took on a job during school, I think for a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Although I had a little bit of money from our parents. Uh, like it was enough to get by and it was fun. Uh, it wasn't over the top by any means. And um, just having extra money in my pocket gave me more pride. It gave me more ownership. Um, and, yeah, I feel like I was way more intentional Yeah, uh, yeah. because, With because that. of all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So as we close out, mm-hmm. what is one piece of encouragement you could give parents that are mm-hmm. on Baby Step 2? They're working their way mm-hmm. out of debt. They're sacrificing. They're maybe working extra. They're mm-hmm. saying no to their kids all the time because they just want to get out of debt. And mm-hmm. it's that strenuous process. And it's hard when you have littles running around the house. Yeah. And so that's what mom and dad did. So what's one yeah, encouragement you can give those parents? Because I know for me, mm-hmm. growing up and knowing that my parents did something, sacrificed something mm-hmm. for me— changed everything. Mm-hmm. Like when I saw, oh, wow, they did that. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's when you're a little bit older, but they yeah. did that. And then the lessons I learned because of the boundaries they mm-hmm. set mm-hmm. is probably what gives me a little bit of mm-hmm. self-control today yeah. Yeah. when it comes to my money. So that's always my encouragement to parents that you're not mm-hmm. harming your kids by telling them no, no by the sacrifice. So so what would y'all say in your perspective? Like, yeah. what would you tell that family? Yeah, I mean, I would just say just to be open and like talk about what's going on. And um, yeah, yeah, just share what's going on. Yeah, have the conversation and share what's going on and um, explain why and be like, you know, we're doing this now. So later Mm -hmm. we can really enjoy going out to eat or Mm -hmm. really going on vacations. And um, we get to really celebrate when we get to Mm -hmm. do that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I can think back to just memories of us whining a lot or complaining, like not going out to lunch uh, after church Mm -hmm. and stuff like that and just begging for things. And um, looking back, I'm so glad we didn't because, like, although we missed out on, like, you know, great breadsticks or something like that at a restaurant. Oh, yeah. God. But uh, <laughs> although we missed out on that, um, you don't remember that. What you remember yeah. is what you learned. Mm-hmm. And we learned the discipline and the value yeah. and uh, the intentionality. And it's not that we couldn't afford going out to eat uh, so much as we already had a, a meal planned at home. Like, we'd already bought the groceries for it. And like sticking to it. Um, so, yeah. yeah. That's good. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, thanks, y'all. Thanks, right? I appreciate it's you coming. Oh, yeah. I'm sitting on my couch. <laughs> Love it. I uh, know. It's very great. It's very great. Hope y'all come back again sometime. <laughs> thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>